So in this example, I have my focus point firmly put on my subject, which is this wonderful bottle of Kentucky bourbon, <laughs> right? Hi everyone, welcome to pal to tech Today we're talking about my favorite focus mode on Fujifilm cameras, single point focus. In a nutshell, single point displays a white square in the viewfinder or the LCD screen. And then you can move this square around with the joystick, just like this. Most of the time you would use single point focus to recompose your shot. You would put the white square over your subject and then half press the shutter. Then holding down the shutter button, you would recompose compose the shot and press it all the way down to take your picture. Now there's a few options and tips I recommend if you plan on using single point focus. First, you can change the size of the focus square itself. To do that, you simply press once on the back joystick button, just like this. And once you do that, rotate the command dial and you will see that the square goes from a single point all the way up to about that large. By the way, a handy tip, speaking of the joystick, if you wanna put the focus point back to the middle of the frame quickly, double tap on the focus stick, just like this. Tap, tap, look at that, it moves it right to the center. Some Fujifilm cameras, such as the X-T4, will give you a choice of either 117 points arranged in a nine by 13 grid, or 425 points arranged in a 17 by 25 grid. And you'll find the location of where to change your focus points in your AF-MF settings. Now, because you can choose 425 points, at least on the X-T4, does that mean that you should choose the higher number of focus points because it's more, not necessarily. Like everything else in photography, it all depends on your subject. If you're shooting carefully controlled, more stationary subjects, then I would recommend 425 points for sure. You will really be able to hit the nail right on the head with what you want to focus on, and you'll give the camera a lot more information to work with. However, if you're shooting, say, street photography or even weddings, you might want to consider 117 points, particularly if you are often using the burst modes. It is generally faster for the camera to autofocus with 117 versus 425 points. And the other part of this is that you can also move the focus square across the frame much faster at 117 points than you can at 425. Lastly, we cannot talk about spot focus without also talking about that all important setting, interlock spot, auto exposure, and focus area. If you turn this on, this means that both your focus and your exposure will be locked to wherever that focus spot is. So in this example, I have my focus point firmly put on my subject, which is this wonderful bottle of Kentucky bourbon, <laughs> right? Now I'm half pressing the shutter button and the camera is reading the focus and the exposure where the spot is, right? But what if I want the brighter area of my image to be in focus? Moving the focus point also moves the exposure metering over there as well. And if you wanna have your image say frame this way where you're exposing for the lighter areas on one side of the image, but wanting your subject to be in focus on the other, what you can do is simply go into that setting and turn it off. Now, if you do that, the camera is going to take your meter reading from the center point of the frame. Right now, the center point's there. If I turn the camera, it's there. If I turn the camera, it's there. You see that? So now I have the focus spot on the bottle and I have my subject in focus and the camera is exposing for the center of the image. You see that right there? And if I move the focus point back over here, right? All it does is focus in. It's still taking the exposure reading from the center of the frame. It always takes it from the center of the frame if you have interlock spot auto exposure and focus area turned off. Now, one more gotcha with this that can trip a lot of people up. If you go into your camera icon and you go to your photometry setting, right now I have it in spot. And if you have it in spot, then everything I just showed you, you can do. However, if you have it in center weighted, right? If I put it in center weighted, now if I go back into autofocus manual focus and turn on interlock spot auto exposure and focus area, look at that. It's not doing anything. Watch this. 
it's not exposing for the bright area of the image, even though I've locked exposure on the focus point and I have the focus point right over the bright area of the image. It doesn't matter. The camera says, not gonna do it. And it's going to instead use the center. So the photometry settings will override interlock spot, auto exposure and focus area. It will override that. I'll move my focus point right into the light. Nothing's happening, but if I turn the camera, Look at that, right in the center. Okay, that's all for single point focus today. Next, I wanna recognize one of my viewers who has not only been very supportive of this channel, but is right now about to get his name posted right onto my studio wall. You see, I have this Patreon account and it's for those viewers who wanna support the channel and come behind the scenes with me in the making of these videos, the gear and everything that I do here. I did wanna recognize in a fun way, the highest, most coveted Pal to Tech membership that you can get, the Gear Iguana Hall of Fame. And so without any further ado, let's add our very first member to the Gear Iguana Hall of Fame. Andrew, are you ready? Here we go, pal. Congratulations, Andrew. You are forever on the studio wall and will always be just slightly out of frame right? in each video that I make. Thank you so much for your support. Well, I may as well finish the video right here. Right? I hope you found the video helpful or at least entertaining. And if you did, be sure to give it the like and subscribe. I am going to be signing off now. Have a wonderful weekend and I will see all of you in another video next week. Take care.